Hello. This week is Mental Health Awareness Week. And as Kubatana, we just want to share with you a few thoughts, a few um, signs and symptoms of ill health, as well as how we can best look after ourselves. I'm going to share my screen with you. I'm not a doctor, but as part of a health profession training, we have been trained to um, talk about mental health. What is mental health? I'm going to use the World Health Organization definition of uh, mental health, which is a state of well-being in which an individual realizes his or her own abilities, can cope with normal stresses of life, can work productively and is able to make a contribution to his or her community. So by default, Ill, Ill health is when you are not able um, to realize your own ability or you are not able to cope with the normal stresses of life and your work pattern, you're not productive in your work and might be impaired from contributing to your community. So um, this encompasses emotional well-being, psychological and social well-being. So in short, uh, mental health affect is how you think, you know, how you feel and how you act. I'll share a few statistics from my workplace. It says one in six people suffered from mental health over the last week. I'm not sure whether this uh, is just in the UK or uh, worldwide, but 800 million people suffer from mental ill health every year. So with such staggering statistics, I think it's only prudent for us to know, you know, the signs and symptoms of ill mental health. One of them being long lasting sadness, extreme moods, and excessive fear, worry, and anxiety. And just to stress, it's excessive fear, not just um, fear or worry or anxiety, but when you go to the extreme end. Social withdrawal, dramatic changes in eating or sleeping habits. So what triggers mental ill health? Anything that, any external events or circumstances that may produce in a very uncomfortable emotion, um, such as anxiety, panic attacks, discouragement, despair, or any negative self-talk can trigger this ill health. So severe psychological trauma, brain chemistry or biological makeup, physical trauma such as war or accidents, and other life events, and the most recent being COVID-19, which has brought a lot of changes that were not anticipated by anybody. Um, so COVID, before COVID, most people were experiencing, you know, a lot of we're running around, you know, very fast paced life. But after COVID, the pace slowed down somewhat, but it brought different pressures in life, like working from home or juggling family, homeschooling, missing out on social events or social engagements. Some people have found it quite stressful not being able to separate their home life and work life. And with some, they've had this feeling of freedom being taken away from them. So bringing a lot of anxiety in their lives. There's a lot of employment uncertainties in, in, in companies in the world, talk of recession, isolation. Some people living on their own in this lockdown has brought a lot of anxiety in them. 
and loss of income. Many people have taken um, salary cuts, loss of routine, especially in um, the behavioral challenged children. Routine is a must, and when this is disrupted, it's brought a lot of anxiety in some people. Health issues, any form of health issues can cause ill health, mental ill health, or loss of lives. If your loved one or a friend um, tragically passes away, this can trigger mental ill health. We react to change differently. But in most cases, first uh, reaction will be shock and disorientation. The brain likes order, it likes routine. So anything different, anything out of the ordinary is normally received with shock, you know, a panic, brain telling you what is happening, what is happening, you know, like people call it flight or or, or fight mode, you know, where the brain just braces itself for uh, action. Some people have met the lockdown and the whole COVID uh, pandemic with anger, emotional responses, and slowly in the last, I think we're almost at the end now where most people it come to terms with the new normal, what we call the new normal. And they've accepted and we're willing to move on. But now that we've come to almost the end of the lockdown, we have to face new challenges. Uh, things have to change. The way we've been doing life is to change again, which might trigger ill health again in any in person who is prone to being anxious. So the different coping mechanisms, I just want to talk about two. One being the escape mechanism, which is one we really want to avoid. Because in the escape mechanism, a person tries to convince themselves that nothing happened. There's, they avoid looking or embracing, they avoid uh, facing what has happened in their lives and some might find it easier to take refuge in alcohol or drugs. The better way of coping would be control. It's positive, it's proactive. You know, this is when you help, when you encourage your brain to refuse to be a victim. You refuse the victim mentality. So you, the brain, like I said before, is used to routine. So when anything out of ordinary comes, the pattern is disrupted. It can respond or react negatively. And brain has a tendency of having a negative bias. If you notice, sometimes you can allow your brain to to, to center, to focus on a negative thing. Like in a day, a very good day, you might have encountered like five minutes of negativism. The brain has a tendency to focus on just that rather than focusing on the other good events that happened. So we need to try and train our brain to focus not on the negative, but on that which is positive. Some says, think of what is pure, think of what is good, think of what is wholesome, you know, focus on these things. And once you start focusing on the good things, the brain can accept it. The next thing the brain wants to do is give it a meaning. You know, everything has to be given a meaning in, in life. So that sort of, that process, you can train your brain to process anything, everything, so that the meaning is positive and works for you. If I can give an example, you might have two people having a conversation. The person, one person has got two choices. To think that the person who is talking to, the, to, to them is being dis disrespectful or is being challenging, 
is looking down on them versus uh, the other emotion where you can encourage your brain to think, oh, this person is encouraging, encouraging me to do better or is coaching me or is giving me good advice. So in every situation, you can, you have the power to not be a victim, but you can choose for your brain to process things positively. You find in life, some people go through their lives just being angry because they choose always to look at the negative, whereas others can be cheerful. With the same life event happening to both parties, to both people, depending on what meaning you, you put on that event, you can lead life quite differently. So one thing that we're encouraged to do for us to maintain mental health, good mental health, is to look, give good meaning to life events. One person, Tony Robbins, says, you know, we should see things as they are, not worse than they are. So when we say give meaning, positive meaning, we're not advocating for positive thinking, uh, psych that type of psychology, no. But when you say, see things as they are, not worse than they are, and then you won't make such crazy decisions or give up on life because you learn next to manage your feelings as well. You know, you've put the, given your brain the right focus, you've given um, events the right, the positive meaning, and then you manage your, 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 your feelings. You're not left as a victim. As well as getting support, because sometimes things can get overwhelming, events can get overwhelming, get support. There is support, there are books to read, there are doctors, there are HR, you know, talk to somebody who has your, um, who has you at heart, you know, your, your welfare at heart, talk to somebody. At the end of this, we'll give our, our contact details as well. So sometimes it is quite freeing to talk to somebody who doesn't know you or who won't prejudge you. Whatever you do, do whatever you can to be part of the change because the landscape has changed. Things have changed. Things are not the way they were. Maybe not for you directly, but indirectly. You know, many people around you would have been affected and that changes, the atmosphere changes a lot of things. Do whatever you can to be part of that change, to be positive and not, you know, fight against it because it's there. And what do we do now, you know, whilst we're waiting? Some are still work, working from home, yes, but there's that sense of there's going to be a next phase. What do we do? We encourage you to go for walks, for exercises. A healthy uh, body normally gives, um, it follows that your mind will also be healthy. Use your five senses. Instead of using headphones and listening to podcasts or music as you run or you do your walk, enjoy nature. Those are some of the simple things that can help you remain mentally healthy. Enjoy nature. Use all your senses as you wait at the traffic light. Instead of venting to frustration at being stopped by the traffic light, Look around, look at the surroundings, enjoy, you know, just looking at people, looking at the sky and taking a, a breather. Take it as a breather rather than, oh, I've been stopped by the traffic light and venting frustration. Take it as a chance for you to breathe in and out and just enjoy life. Appreciate the simple things, you know, with your children. I think... Um, yeah, that's self-explanatory. Pay attention to all your senses. I've said that. Practice non-judgmental listening. Because when you are on edge, you know, any slight thing can set you off. Practice thinking positively, you know, as long as it doesn't get you. Yes, yeah, just try practice not seeing the worst 
in any situation. Be grateful for all the things that you know that you have. Sometimes life can seem quite bleak. That's understandable. But when you are able to breathe in and breathe out, that in itself is enough for you to be grateful for. And self-development. You know, we do not want to stay the way way we are. It, when you stop growing, you know, you start dying. Somebody said that. I don't, I can't remember who. We need to develop ourselves reading uh, books instead of watching a film, watch a doc documentary now and then, you know, just encourage your brain to, 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 to be active and hobbies, take on new hobbies, um, new hobbies or old hobbies that you, you, you yet put aside because of the hustle and bustle of life. You know, Stay connected to friends and families. So as Kubatana, we, we want to look after you. There'll be a lot more uh, talks like this where we hope you can get one or two nuggets that can help you and help your family and friends. Um, so we have one, one event coming up on Friday on, on the 20th on Friday at yes on the 22nd of May at 12:30 it's painting when we talk of self development and hobbies i know with some of us we've been so busy with life that we stopped you know looking after ourselves or stopped trying to develop ourselves or just appreciating where we are this event is by a well a, well, it's an art. She's an artist. She's local to me, but she is um, really talented, and she's given up her time to teach us how to paint, how to draw. You know, some might you might find it weird or something that you'd never thought of. Those are some of the things that you can start engaging your mind in. You know, just to to move your mind away from the norm just engage your mind in something different that encourages, you know, that mindfulness is what's encouraged to keep us mentally healthy. Do something that you have never done. Bake, bake bread and, you know, I don't know, cook a different recipe that you have not cooked before. That is encouraged in mindfulness. So, Going back to Friday, the 22nd at 12.30, I would encourage all of us, as many people who are free, to come and, you know, just take a paintbrush or crayons, whatever you have, and do something different. That is mentally, you know, challenging, and that can help you stay healthy. And as well as with your kids, you know, we're celebrating the end of, quite a stressful term for some people. It's something for us to do as a way of celebrating. So in everything else, if you feel that you are, there is something not right, please do seek help. Ask for help, ask for support, and people will point you in the right direction. And above everything else, when everything is said and done, just breathe, you know, breathe, take in a deep breath, breathe out. You know, sometimes that's all it takes, you know, and then you look around and you see that it's not as bad as it, as it seems. So that's all from me. I hope you've got one or two things uh, from this talk. Our contact details are on the screen now. You can contact us by email, WhatsApp, or on Facebook as well. We are a non-profitable, non-political organization. We seek to help those who are um, the poor, those who are disadvantaged in the society here in the UK as well as in Zimbabwe. In Zimbabwe, we're looking more at um, healthcare 
as well during this time we've been doing some food parcels food hampers we really appreciate um, your 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 contributions we value you we pray that you will continue donating as you've been doing thank you very much for that support so any anything else that you'd want to contact us with please feel free Take care. Until next time.